Hello, my name is Sarah Payne and welcome to my sewing room. Now, I thought I'd record a very quick tutorial today because um, I want to show you something that I'm working on. I'm, I'm in my sewing room and I'm doing some prep. Now, um, one of the strange things about my job is that I often end up working on projects completely out of season. So it is June, it is very warm and I'm working on Christmas. <laughs> so sometimes it's a little odd and it can be a bit tricky getting into the festive spirit, but that's the way that it works in in um, the sewing industry. So what I thought I would do is show you the project that I'm working on at the moment. Now I've got here, this is part made and this pattern is called a tumbling block. Now it's a very traditional pattern, but great fun to do. And it uses um, cuts of 60 degree diamonds. So we've got the 60 degree diamond here, three of them together, make it look like you've actually looking at a cube from point on. So it gives you a sort of perspective. It's a great pattern to do, it's great fun. It works with all sorts of fabrics, as long as you have um, a range that are different. So if you were using lots of different fabrics, you would use a light here, perhaps a medium here and a dark there. Um, and overall you would get this the same effect. But I've actually got um, three fabrics here that I've chosen to use because I've got meterage of them, which is which is really nice. But what I've got here is um, three pieces from Craft Cotton Company. Um, we've got the metallic trees in green, which has got the little little Christmas trees on it with a little bit of uh, metallic gold in there, really very festive. Then I have the metallic snowflake in red. See those lovely little snowflakes on there. And then I've got the same one again, but in white. So because I've got three quite big pieces, it means that I can make a quilt using just three colours. I can make it quite big and then I've also got enough bits to do some borders on it. So I, I absolutely love working with uh, 60 degree diamonds, but they can be a bit tricky with the Y-shaped seam. You see here, all of the seams are Y-shaped seams, which means you've got to insert them. But there is an easy way to do it. So uh, what I did first of all was um, I've used my um, Easy Rule 60 degree diamond template. Here we go, that's that one. It does look like it's backwards if I hold it that way. There you go, you should see that the right way around. Um, so it's a 60 degree template. Uh, the largest size for this is four and a half inches. So I cut four and a half inch strips of my fabric, laid this on top and then cut my diamonds off accordingly. It keeps everything nice and accurate and it means that I end up with a big pile of shapes like this, all a beautifully cut. Okay, so when I work on a tumbling block, I make, e I make each block at a time. So I'll make a block like this and then I insert it with the other blocks. Um, as I said, it can be a bit tricky, um, but there are little tips that you can do, little tricks that will make it easier. So, first of all, you need to mark one of your fabrics. Now I've chosen to mark my white one because it's just easier to see. In this case, I'm using a Soline Duo pen, which will disappear, the um, ink markings will disappear with the addition of the eraser pen which I have, um, but because this is going to be on the inside, you could actually mark it with a fine pencil, just like one of these little pencil with a point on the end like that. Um, it doesn't really matter, but I kind of like to get into the habit of using a proper marker so I don't accidentally mark something that's going to you know, not go away. So what we need to do is mark um, at each point a quarter of an inch from the edge of my diamond. So I've got marks on my sewing machine here so I can see. I'm just using that to mark a quarter of an inch because I've got tape measure on the front. So what this is going to do is it's going to stop me at a quarter of an inch from the end. So I've marked all four corners. Um, because I'm doing multiple uh, tumbling blocks they're all going to need inserting so basically every end has to be left open so I've marked all four of my corners you can see I've just put a little tiny dot there at each corner there we go right so next I'm going to get my piece of fabric 
So I'll start off with a green. I'm going to take my green. It's always a good idea to lay them out on your sewing table first because I want them all to be white, then green, then red. If I actually sew two of these together incorrectly, it's going to stand out. So I'm just lying this, have that one in front of me so I can see, and then I can place these right sides together. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance from that dot and stop at the dot at the end. I want to do a back stitch at the beginning and the end of each row because that will secure it. What happens otherwise is once you've got the whole section and you pull this out and you flatten it, your threads will show through and it'll just look untidy. So I'm just going to take my bobbin and top thread out the back, out the way. I'm dropping the needle down onto that dot. I'm going to go forwards one stitch and then use the back stitch on my machine to go back to secure it and then stitch all the way along to the end of my diamond but stopping at that point. Now sometimes it might take you a little far so what I do is I can pull up my needle and just move it back and then drop the needle down and then perhaps do a back stitch there so I know that I stop at that point. So sometimes you have to move your machine around a little bit. So let's just move that out of the way. And you'll see now that I've sewn those two together, but both ends are open by a quarter of an inch. All right. So next I'm going to take my red metallic snowflake, put that right sides together. Okay. And what will happen is I need to stop on that dot again so that I don't sew onto the green. OK, so that makes a bit more sense when I've just stitched that. Now, again, one stitch down forwards, one stitch back. Keep going but make sure you stop at the dot. You don't want to go over the dot because then what will happen is you'll stitch into the green and it will pucker. You'll get a pucker in the middle. So now, if I just open that up, can you see there's a tiny, tiny little bit of white showing, but that's fine. But I've not stitched those green and red bits together. So now what I can do is take the white and pull it out of the way lay those two pieces flat so the white is now out of the way um, I don't have any more visible dots because I'm not stitching the white anymore but I can see where the green stopped so I'm going to start from where the green stopped go all the way to the end and then stop quarter of an inch from there as well so thread out of the way Right, one stitch forward, one stitch back, and then carry on. And there we go. Open that out. And there we go, perfectly inserted. It needs a press, but that's okay. Is where, where I folded it, it looks like it's a tuck, but it's not. It's where I folded it out of the way. Now, when it comes to pressing, I press in either a clockwise or an anti-clockwise direction. It doesn't matter as long as they're all the same. So I will press that round, that round, and then that round. Oh, let's trim some of these extra threads off. And what that will do to that centre piece is if I just press that with my fingers, you'll see that it starts to form a little flower in the middle, just there and I can press that flat and it means I don't end up with a very bulky centre. That's done by pressing the, the seams in the round. That does mean though that I've got white here so one seam will actually be pressed over the white and you just have to keep an eye. I don't want the red showing through so if that bit of red does show through on the outside I'll just get in there with a small pair of scissors and just trim that seam allowance away so that you can't see it through the white fabric. 
so there's our piece now we get the next piece of our quilt up because I've done a Y shaped seam there but now I need to insert it into here using another Y shaped seam so you see this starts to grow quite quickly because I'm using big pieces so I'm just going to line up my fabrics Right. Now remember your diamonds are cut on the bias. Two edges will be on the straight grain and two edges will be on the bias so they can be a bit stretchy. So just be careful about pulling them too much. So I'm just going to pop a pin here because now I'm starting to get a bigger piece. I just want to secure it. All right. And I'm going to go from the quarter inch dot there forward one, back one, oh, just lost my bottom bit, there we go, and so all the way along, stopping at that quarter of an inch, back stitch, that one out and each time I'm just making sure that I can get that lying flat but that the bits line up because you want them to all finish as a point now when you come to this bit when you're inserting you'll find that you've actually got six bits of fabric all meeting so just be careful that you've got everything lining up where you want pin it if necessary and then we again back to the dot when I first learned to do this Barbara my friend showed me how to do it and she used to say you just have to believe in the dot So just make sure you stop at the dot, little back stitch, and there we go, that's where we've just inserted that one. So that's the point, uh, this is the whole section, this piece is the whole bit that I've just put in. So we've got a nice crisp line here and in the centre and on the side um, and it starts our tumbling block is starting to starting to grow it's starting to look fabulous so I'll just keep moving on with this when it gets to the size that I want it to be I'll add some borders to it and I've got a very festive um, quilt with the tumbling blocks um, I have done it before as a baby quilt and then appliqued letters on it. That's quite good fun. You can use it to fill up, get rid of all your scraps. It's just getting the hang of that quarter of an inch. Stopping quarter of an inch from either end will allow you to insert quite comfortably your Y-shaped seams. It works with 60 degree diamonds and then you'll also use it if you're working with big hexagons. That's how you'll put your hexagons together because they will also, because here we go, here's a hexagon, they will also make that shape. So um, if you do get a chance to make anything from my tutorials or you enjoy the tips, please do let me know. You'll find me on Facebook as Sarah Payne Quilter. Pop over there, um, share some pictures. Uh, we'd all love to see them. Thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.